There have been 775 different Formula 1 racing drivers since, well, the beginning of F1. But agreeably, not everyone can be the next Verstappen, Hamilton, Schumacher. I'm talking about Michael Schumacher, of course. So today we're going to be talking about a fallen soldier of Formula 1. Someone who really didn't meet expectations. Antonio Giovinazzi. I want to quickly interrupt this video to wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year for whenever you're watching this. I think this is going to come out before the New Year's or maybe before Christmas. But with that said, subscribe, please. With that out the way, enjoy your day. So after being dropped from F1, how did Antonio manage to win Le Mans with Ferrari of all teams? Well, I think it's best we rewind the clocks back to how it all started. His racing career started in 2006, around the time when Lightning McQueen came out. Could this foreshadow his success with the Reds? I'm not sure, but he won three karting championships in 2006, which were impressive, to say the least. He won the Italian National Trophy 60cc, the 36th Tormeo Industria Mini Kart Championship, and the Euro Trophy 60. Quite impressive for his first year ever in karting. Then he won the WSK Master Series KF2 Championship in 2010 and 2011. The title was then won by Max Verstappen the following year, so he was going down the correct path. Is it a bit too early to be comparing Giovinazzi to Verstappen? Maybe? His single-seater career took off with his solid participation in the Formula Piloto China, where he won the title quite convincingly in his first season in 2012, after winning six of the 18 races in the calendar. This included a win streak of four races around the Sepang circuit in November 2012. He also had a small venture in the 2012 Formula Abarth, where he had successful results, two wins and another podium, all as a guest driver. Impressive. His promising career proceeded with the participation in the 2013 British Formula 3 Championship, the FIA Formula 3 European Championship, and the Masters of Formula 3 race around Zandvoort, all with the double R team. The Italian's highlights of the 2013 season were a second place finish in the British F3 Championship, where he lost the title at the hands of Jordan King. He spent 2014 in the FIA Euro Championship, where he finished sixth in the construct- no where he finished sixth in the standings, earning himself two wins and several podiums. The champion of the series was Esteban Ocon, while Max Verstappen finished in third. So we can say the grid was quite stacked. In 2015, yet again, he raced in the FIA Formula 3 Championship, but with Carlin this time. He finished a distant second in the championship, but he did take home six wins that season, so that was a positive. What else was a positive was the fact that he finished in front of some Formula 1 drivers. Lance Stroll, mm, well, might, might not be the best example, but Charles Leclerc, George Russell and Alex Albon. He won the 2015 Master of Formula 3 race at Zandvoort ahead of George Russell, becoming the first Italian to win the event and the only one so far. The following season, he participated in two races in the Asian Le Mans series where he won them both. 2016 delivered another successful second place, this time in the GP2 series with Prima Racing, his teammate being Pierre Gasly, which is a familiar name in Formula 1, a race winner. He's doing pretty well for himself. Anyway, Pierre Gasly beating him by just eight points to win the championship, despite the Italian winning five races compared to the Frenchman's four. His wins, his podiums, and all of his success was paying off as in 2017, Formula 1 entered his life where Ferrari announced him as the third racing driver for the 2017 season. Congrats. It's also safe to assume that he checked off another little box on his bucket list as he got to drive the Sauber C36 as a substitute for Pascal Wehrlein in the Australian and Chinese Grand Prix. As the German driver wasn't fit to drive after his crash in 2017, the Italian, who participated in the 2017 winter testing, didn't impress in the first two races of his F1 career. With a 12th place finish at Melbourne and heavy crashes in Saturday's Q1 in Shanghai. And during the Grand Prix, well, he didn't show the greatest of starts to Formula 1. At least it wasn't as bad as Mazepin's start, right? After a brief stint with Sauber, he landed a third driver racing seat with Haas. He participated during FP1s in 13 Grand Prix weekends throughout 2017 and 2018, seven with Haas in 2017, and six with Alfa Romeo Sauber in 2018. And on the 25th of September 2018, he had done it. Congrats! He had just signed with Alfa Romeo to partner Kimi Raikkonen in the 2019 season. Yet again, congratulations! But 
there's, there's always a but, isn't there? The 2019 season didn't start off too hot. He was really struggling in the car. He couldn't match Raikkonen's speed consistency during the races. Yes, yes, Raikkonen's a world champion. Of course he's going to be fast, but Giovinazzi just wasn't there. He only outscored Raikkonen once in the first 12 races. He only had one point compared to Kimi Raikkonen's 31. So 31 times more points? Yeah. But those were Sundays. Saturdays, could they be any better? Not really. Kimi outqualified him 8-4. Not a good performance, well, anywhere, Saturdays or Sundays. He got his first smell of points around the Austrian Grand Prix, the Red Bull Ring. And these weren't his last. The Italian scored points around his home Grand Prix at Monza with a ninth place. Then he even led the race in Singapore for four laps and defended the position with good moves. But eventually, he finished 10th, scoring back-to-back -back points for the first time in his career. On the 4th of November, 2019, the rumours of Nico Hülkenberg taking GOC to Alfa Romeo for the 2020 season were shut down. The team confirmed the Ferrari-related Italian for 2020. Midway through the season, Giovinazzi started to compete better against his experienced teammate during qualifying and the races. In the second half, Giovinazzi scored points three times, with solid drives at his home race in Monza, at Singapore, and with a great fifth-place finish at Sao Paulo. While he finished in the points three times in the second half of the 2020 season, Raikkonen only finished in the points once. Is this a good sign for Giovinazzi? Is he improving? Or is Raikkonen getting older? At the start of the 2020 season, he found it hard to match Raikkonen again, but he had scored points in the first race of the year, while his teammate's first points came in the ninth round. Giovinazzi also scored points at the Eiffel Grand Prix and at Imola, with two 10th place finishes. His final season in Formula 1 was 2021. Giovinazzi scored points twice for Alfa Romeo, a 10th place finish in Monaco, and a 9th at the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix. His third full season in Formula 1 was a less competitive one, as he had just scored 3 points, as opposed to the 14 and 4 he scored in 2019 and 2020, respectively. As I said, things came crashing down at the end of 2021. His dreams? He was replaced by a Chinese driver, Zhou Guanyu. Is this the end of Giovinazzi's career? Forever? After departing from Formula 1, Antonio Giovinazzi raced in Formula E with Dragon Pensk for one season. But, Giovinazzi doing Giovinazzi things, he failed to score points the entire season. After an unsuccessful year outside of F1, he got called up to race for Ferrari in the World Endurance Championship. He was going to be driving the Ferrari 499P hypercar. Ferrari's first entry in the top Le Mans category in 50 years. He, James Calando, and Alexander Pierre Guidi won Le Mans. Now it might not be a championship or a win in F1, but it's Le Mans, one of the most prestigious races ever. He wasn't the driver who crossed the finish line to win the race, but he still participated and was stellar. His moves were crazy and an all-round great performance. From failing in Formula 1 to Formula E, it looked like his career was going nowhere. But this gave him a lifeline. I think he's found his place in motorsports and, well, clearly, he's doing well. Giovinazzi also hadn't been on the podium since 2016 Spa in GP2. So getting back on the podium, winning Le Mans? That's great. Again, congrats. They came out on top in a close run battle with Formula E champion Sebastian Buemi, Dragon racer and Formula 1 driver Brendan Hartley, and Ryo Hirakara in the number 8 Toyota. A mistake by the latter as the race reached its climax, proved costly, and the number 51 Ferrari needed no second invitation to take the advantage and make the top step of the podium. It truly meant a lot to him. He even said, I must confess, I cried. When you're a kid, and when you're a racing driver, you have a few races that you watch all of the time. An emotional Giovinazzi told the media post-race. It's the 24 hours of Le Mans, Indianapolis, and then, as an Italian, racing at Monza. So it's one of my dreams. Today, a dream came true. So with that all wrapped up, do you see Giovinazzi winning any more series with Ferrari? And if so, let me know down in the comments. What did you think about the video? If you liked it, like it. Subscribe and peace.